and sisters. I hope by now, fear is not in your vocabulary. I hope <laughs> that you have a lot of fear of God going on. You have no fear of bad news. And obviously, my title is called No Fear of Total Commitment. Okay. And I, I kind of like that title, actually. <laughs> I didn't always have that conviction of commitment. You know, when I think about my life before I became a Christian, coming from where I came from, being a single mom down in the hood, not seeing mar true marriages, not seeing real relationships, commitment, what was that? So having a relationship with God, he had to teach me what it means to be committed. Okay? Let's look at our theme scripture before I go into the, the lesson here. I do have a few scriptures that's on my heart that I want to share with you guys. Just a little, little intro. Let's look at the theme scripture, okay, that I was given. If you saw on the paper here, let's look over to Revelations 2, starting in Revelation. <laughs> All right, Revelations 2, verse 8. This is to the church in Smyrna, Smyrna, to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these are the words of him who is the first and the last. Who is that? Jesus. Who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty. Can you guys say we can relate to that one? Oh, yeah. This past year, 2014. <laughs> Lots of afflictions. We talked about finances, lots of poverty. <laughs> Still poverty. <laughs> All right. Yet you are rich. You get that? He said you are rich. I know the slander of those who say there are Jews and are not. This is to the church. But, uh, but whoa, are a synagogue of Satan. Have experienced some of that lately. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Sometimes this year we say, I don't, I don't like suffering. I am not here to suffer. I got free will in Christ. I don't have to suffer. But that's not what he says. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Are you suffering? right now today I tell you the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and I don't even believe that any of us in this room has been in prison oh yeah or maybe in a different way prison but these guys was put in prison he says why to test you so when you think about where you've been 2014 here we go again. Remember last workshop? Every year you got to assess. Have you been tested? Are you being tested right now? Even with the lessons you just heard, even last night was, whew. That was a lesson last night. And you will suffer persecution for, he said, for 10 days. We like 10 days. It's been like a whole year. But he said 10 days for these guys. Be faithful even to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful. Are you being faithful? I believe you are because you're right here today. You have been faithful. I believe you passed the test this year. Because there are a lot of people that should be here that's not here. So, ask yourself, have I passed the test this year? Am I faithful? Because if you are faithful, that means you are growing in faith. You are growing in commitment. Isn't that awesome? 
He said, I will give you the crown of life. What do you want? Do you want the crown of life? Do you want, I just want some girlfriends. I just want me a man. Single sisters. <coughs> Can I get some water? Some water? <coughs> I just want a cranking job. Right? I just want my kids to be obedient. I just want them to come to church with me and sit next to me and be good. <laughs> That's what I want. But do we want the crown of life? That's what he says here. Be faithful. Do you have a fear of being faithful? Think about it. Would they say, wow, she's a faithful girl. She is so faithful. I know when she goes through her trials, she's going to come through with flying colors because she's faithful. Look at her faith. You know, the, the disciples said to Jesus, increase my faith. <laughs> Did you pray that this year? God, this is going to be my vow. I want you to increase my faith. You ever say those prayers and you're like, why did I pray that? Yeah. <laughs> Be faithful. Another scripture I love. This one is what Jesus says. Go over to John 6. <clears throat> John 6. This is when Jesus talks about who he is. And what he lives on, and he's sharing with his disciples. We're disciples in here, right? Yes. Let me see how you're going to respond when Jesus, if you were right there with Jesus. John 6, 53. Says, Jesus said to them, Jesus saying to you guys, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood. You have no life in you. Can you say this year, I have literally at the, ate the flesh of Jesus. I have literally drunk his blood. Or did you go, oh, Lord, that's nasty. Mm. <laughs> Like, don't give me this drama. No, she didn't talk to me like that. But Jesus says, you know what? I was spit on. I was kicked. I, was, I got slandered. You going to drink my blood. You going to eat my flesh. Have you been fighting it this year? Do you think you deserve to not to eat his flesh, drink his blood? Because he says, if you don't, you do not have life in you. 56, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Now, what y'all thinking? Are you thinking, what? Do you not understand who I am? Because look what they said in verse 60. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? You think about your life. Assess your life. Where are you going? Look at the teachings that God's been taking you through this year. You know, we always say when we're going through things, what is God trying to teach me in this situation? Do you say, oh, <laughs> this is too hard. I, uh, no, I, I don't want to accept this. Yeah. 
aware that his disciples, 61, were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Have you said that before when you're going through stuff? I am so offended. I cannot believe. Right? Think about it. You know the situations you've gone through in your life this year. It can be even with our spouses. It can be with our children again. It can be with your boss at your job. Right? Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you got fired. Maybe you don't even have a job. You've been looking for two years. And you still don't have, you still eating top ramen. I know I am, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I love it. <laughs> Does this offend you? Well, what's going on in your life? How you doing? He says, whatever you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before. The Spirit gives life, he says. The flesh Counts for what? The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and guess what? They are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. There are some of you in this room who do not believe. I think you could be here because you just, I'm trying. I'm not going to say I believe, but I'm trying. I'm here, Anna. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. Jesus knows. We talked about that earlier. We might think that, you know, we, we doing things and nobody knows. But God knows. Jesus knows. You're having conversations in this church that is not appropriate. And when you start saying things like, this is between me and you. This is a secret between me and you. I say, be careful, guys. 66, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Simon Peter answered him. I want to be like Peter. Lord! To whom shall we go? Do you think that way? If you walked out of these doors right now because you had a rough year, a rough day right now, where are you going to go? Because I've seen people who have left and they come back and they say, I went to like 15 churches. I talked to a sister last night who has left our church. She's married now. And she says, I've been to, I don't know how many churches. And this, it ain't nothing like being here. I said, come home, sis. Come home. There's nothing out there. That's what Peter said. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. What you looking for? Who has the words of eternal life? Your husband? Married women? Lizzie? <laughs> Malika <laughs> Who has the words of eternal life Jesus. Who Jesus. We believe and know that you are the holy one of God Would you say this year I ain't going nowhere If you've been thinking about leaving I hope this is you That you would say Yeah you know what I am offended Lord why you let me go through all this stuff this year? My husband's sick as all get out. Twice surgery, walking around looking crazy. He's sick. He can have his legs cut off, y'all. Tomorrow, he can have his legs cut off. I can say, what are you doing, Lord? What are you saying? And it's okay. Fight with him. Talk to the Lord. He even said, does this offend you? <laughs> Jesus said, have I not chosen you? The twelve. 
He says, have I not chosen you? You said Jesus was Lord. Have I not chosen you? Sometimes we just want to be chosen. We forget. Been, you know how we go through so much pain and we don't feel special anymore. We don't feel loved anymore. Who was saying that just a few minutes ago? We, for, all, we forgot Jesus is the ultimate, I mean, God is the ultimate disciple. He's the best friend in the whole wide world. If you're going to be committed to anything, be committed to Jesus. He said, I chose you. He says, yet one of you is a devil. And we forget, even in the church, somebody is a devil. I know we want to have a great heart and we want to go, we all, we all love. I trust everybody. Everybody is good. But there is somebody that's like the devil. Always. Hear from her. She's, she's been around longer than me. <laughs> But that's what the scripture said. Where are you going to go? If you're making plans to leave, where are you going? Think about it. I hope that you're going to be like Peter. I have nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I've been in this church 20 years. And you know, yes, if it breaks down, it breaks down. Because my God, who somebody has said it, is bigger. If he tears it down, he tears it down. And you know what? He will rebuild. Because that's who the God we serve. Because he will find somebody. Read your Bibles. He will find somebody who has a heart for him. And he will raise that buddy up. He will raise him up. You don't have to fear. Are you committed? Last one on here, Jeremiah 18. I haven't even got to the point. But Jeremiah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Jeremiah 18. No fear of total commitment to the Lord. Jeremiah 18, verse 1. Ooh, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. And there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O oh, house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does? Declares the Lord. Like Clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, <coughs> why else does God have to turn it down? Why he has to destroy it? <coughs> then I will relent, he says, and not inflict on it the disaster I have planned. See, we forget, we think everything, everything is about man. It ain't about man, it's about God. So where is your commitment to God? And if at another time, and, at, and if at another time, time, we don't know the time. But if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. <clears throat> so what am I doing? You got to think about what are you doing are you being obedient to God? We, we, we can get busy on looking at everybody. Everybody. But we're not looking, somebody else said that, but we're not looking at ourselves. I'm committed to my God. I got to work on Tracy. 
I got to make sure Tracy is staying true to God because I don't want this. I don't want him to destroy me. But God has a plan. He says, if you are not repenting, I will tear it down. So how are we doing? Are we in sin? <coughs> if you realize you're in sin today, I hope you're going to want to repent. Because I believe that God holds to his promises. I really do believe that with all my heart. Go over to Isaiah 66. Okay. Isaiah 66, another great scripture. Verse 1, this is what the Lord says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being. This is the one I esteem. This is what I want. He who humbles... And a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. Are you humble? Do you have a contrite, broken spirit? When you find yourself in sin, are you broken? Do you tremble at God's word? Do we even open up the Bible? How are we doing in our quiet times? I hear... We are so busy, we work in, we doing all this stuff, and then our quiet times go bye-bye. Yeah. And then we start blaming the church. The church has got us so busy. Okay, but you have choices. When you get up in the morning, what you choosing to do? Yeah. Come on. You have all the time in the world to have your times with God. That's your choice. He says that's what he esteems, this type of a heart. Someone who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Verse 3, but whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a man. And whoever offers a lamb like one who breaks a dog's neck. Whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood. And whoever burns memorial incense like one who worships an idol. They have chosen their own ways. And their souls delight in their admonitions. So I also will choose ooh, harsh treatment for them. And will bring upon them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. Isn't that deep? When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Are you listening to God's word? Are you even in your Bible to hear his words, to hear his voice? I hope if you're not, that this is something you're going to make a decision going into this new year, that I need to tremble at God's words. I need to be humble, and I need to have a contrite spirit. Because that's the type of person that God esteems. That's who I want to be. Okay, guys, first point. I don't even know what time it is. Okay, all right. My first point, totally committed to grace. There's no fear in being totally committed to grace because there's grace. Sometimes I think we forget about grace. <coughs> First Corinthians 15. 
I want to be humble. I want to be contrite. First Corinthians 15, verse 1, uh, verse 1. Now, sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. By this gospel, you are saved. Amen. Right? If you hold, if, that's an if. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. This is to the Corinthians church. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. Are we doing the same thing? What I've received, I passed on to all those lost souls out there. Sometimes you have to assess, how did I do last year? How many people did I let just pass by me and I didn't give them what I got? This is what I passed on, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and, and last of all, this is Paul talking, y'all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. I think he was pretty insecure. For I am the least, I think that's pretty humble, I am the least of the apostles. And do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Paul know who he is. He's a very humble man. And I think, you know, we got to take a look and go, who am I? Some of us can think, I'm very noble. I'm, I'm just all, hey, I got my degrees. I know some of y'all. <laughs> it's, you know, being here in D.C., it is very, hey, come, come on now. Yeah. I can be very insecure. I mean, when I came here, when I came to visit, when I was going to move here, and I was like, okay, I got all the, little, uh, you know, all the updates on D.C. and all the kind of people in D.C. And, and Kip was like, you got to do your hair. You got to make sure you wear a suit. And, you know, you got you know, you to do the part. You know, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I'm just a little girl in, from the hood. And, and, from a single mom. No degree. <laughs> and, I, and I remember I was like so terrified when I came to visit you guys and speak. <laughs> <clears throat> but I was like, you know, Paul said in Corinthians, this is all I know. I'm just an ordinary person. All I know is Christ. That's all I got. But you know, that's all I need. That's all I need. So I'm fired up. <clears throat> he says, for I am the least of the apostles. Verse 10, but by the grace of God. I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. So his grace to me, so when I assess my life, when you assess your life and go, who am I? I know who I am. I don't deserve to be called a disciple. I don't deserve to be called a women's ministry leader. I don't deserve to even be called a mom or a wife. I know who I am. Do you know who you are before Jesus came and saved you? Or have you taken it back? He says, this grace to me was without effect. And I tell you, this grace that he's given me, because I know I do not deserve to be here. I do not deserve to be sitting up here preaching. I do not deserve to be living in Washington, D.C. with the White House. <laughs> I don't deserve anything. But I know what I deserve when I look at my life, my sins. Being a stripper, sleeping with married men, hating everybody, sleeping all immorality up the yang yang, having an abortion, Bitter as all get out on everybody. 
talk down on everybody. Very, very prejudiced. I'm from the South, y'all. God had to take me all the way to Irvine, California, all the way to Portland, Oregon. Yo, you're going to love some white people. We I know where I come from. I don't deserve nothing. He says, no, I worked harder than all of them. Are you working hard for the grace? What are you doing? Every day, are you grateful for salvation? I don't want to be an Israelite that want to keep looking back. And man, I remember when I was living by myself, I didn't care about nobody. I was just doing my thing. I was lonely as all get out. I ain't trust nobody. Catching all kinds of little diseases from sleeping, no con, no, just out there, y'all. Why well, I want to go back to it? I worked harder than all of them, yet not I. This is the thing. He said, yet not I. But the grace of God that was with me. So it's the grace with you. Because if the grace is with you, you're working hard for God. This church is not about all this, see, you got to work. Mm, you're going to put pressure on you. Where's the baptisms? How many people did you share with? That's not what it's about, you guys. We got to get back to the scriptures. Paul says it right here. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I. It's not about me, but it's the grace in me. It's the grace in you. Did we forget about it? Be totally committed to grace. I'm going to be one more point. Be totally committed doing God's testing. <coughs> Let's go to Acts 2. Sorry, not, not God's testing. Totally committed like a baby Christian. Oh, Let's be totally committed like a baby Christian. Sometimes we just got to go back to the basics. Some of us who's been around a very long time, we need to just go back. We need to be reminded. Yes. What were the baby Christians like? Because in our church, we have a lot of young Christians in our church. Yeah. My husband talked about the demographics of our church we got older Christians and we got young Christians and I was blown away there's nothing in the middle you either old or you young <laughs> so we need to mesh it together help each other <laughs> we can't look down on one or the other we gotta work together Okay, Acts 2, and we know this scripture, this is from, what study is this from, Acts 2, 42? What study? Kingdom, kingdom right? Coming of the kingdom. All right. That's when we found out, wow, the kingdom is the church? What? What year? What year did it come? Come on, church. <laughs> for his people not a physical nation right not a physical place the kingdom's within you it's about your heart acts 2 42 they devoted themselves after 3,000 was baptized that day when they realized this is what it's about. This is why you can be committed to God. Because what did Jesus do for you? When they find out about Jesus, all those people that was there, 
they were like, wait a minute. Yes, this Jesus, remember Peter, this Jesus whom you crucified, you nailed him to the cross. You, with the help of wicked men. What was their hearts like? Let's look at it real quick. Go up a little bit. 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Is that still our hearts? What shall I do? No matter what's going on. Jesus went through a lot worse than anything we've gone through, you guys. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Look at Jesus. Is your heart still soft? What shall I do? It's Jesus. He died for me. I did that. My life. My sin. You should know your sin. Peter replied, verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do you remember that? What should we do? We were cut. This Jesus, that shouldn't be Jesus. That should be me. Remember that? Going into this new year, let's remember Jesus Commit ourselves to God. They were devoted, 42, to the apostles' teachings. What is that? To the fellowship. What is that? Are we committed to each other? The fellowship. Are we spending time together? If we're not, let's change it this year. This church needs to change. We need to be addicted, devoted. Commit it, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Breaking of bread, what is that? When we take communion on Sundays, we're supposed to remember why we take communion. Be devoted to it. And to prayer. How are we doing in prayer? I, I love, I think that's Jackie said, so who said it about, I got we got I got to take it higher. In my prayer life, I got to cry, yeah, crying out to God way more, way more. I, I, I remember sitting and just reading um, Job, crying my eyes out because I'm like questioning God. And then God was like, when he finally speaks, who are you to back in my counsel? I was like, oh, okay, God, I'm so sorry, God. You know what I mean? Like, really, being in your word, trembling at his word, crying out to God, I'm so sorry, I've been a, such a wretched. Please forgive me, God. But they were devoted to prayer. Is that going to be you this year? If your prayer life is not as strong as it needs to be. I hope when James did that lesson, did you make your vows? Did you sit down this week and make vows? If you didn't, do it tonight. Let's take it seriously. Everyone, 43, was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. We don't have apostles here anymore. You know what our awe is? Each and every one of you. When we see people get baptized, you guys, it's not about, oh, they're looking for numbers. They just want to baptize people. This is saving souls. This is Giving people grace, a relationship with God. I think we forget about that. Salvation. <clears throat> we see marriages being healed. We see children becoming Christians. That's why we get the good news. We get to hear all over the world what's going on out there. Great stuff. So we can be in awe. When you had a disease and you come back and it's gone. Just little, all kinds of, wow. Right? Your family members, all of a sudden, somebody just told me earlier, because she's going through stuff, now she wants to study the Bible. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> we should be in awe. Oh. Right. You woke up this morning. Oh. <laughs> 
My mother-in-law is not even here because she's bleeding like crazy in her nose. But I'm here. I'm, I can walk. My husband, my husband walking like this. I can walk. <laughs> I got so much to be grateful for. I'm in awe of God. I got my health. Some people didn't even wake up today. Yeah. Where is your awe in God? All the believers, 44, were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Some of us are so afraid of this. We got to get back to it. We got to love each other. We got to help each other. Don't be afraid to pick up and help each other. I went to the airport this morning to pick up people. We got to serve, guys. We got to help each other who's in need. They broke bread in their homes. Wait, 46, I don't want to forget that one. Every day, every day they continue to meet together. I know we don't meet every day. I wish we could. Some of us are raised with families, big families. I'm raised with six, it's six of us. I love being with my, my physical sisters. We were together every day. We lived together. Right? Can you imagine we were together every day, hanging out, living together, right? It would be fun. We will fight. We fight now. But it's good. We need to fight. I like to fight. I really do. I love to fight, y'all. I like drama. Bring it on. Because. I love when God gets the victory, y'all. We, we work it out. The scriptures come to life. Don't be afraid of conflict. It's good. It's good for the soul. <laughs> they broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Are we breaking bread? Are we having people in our homes? I'm very grateful. I have to share all the sisters, families who brought food, and the gutains. I mean, Burgundy, Jennifer, uh, Jackie, um, um, Jeannie, all you guys. Um, Jackie, oh my lord. <laughs> you, you, know, you guys, uh, where's um, Rachel? I mean, brought food, you know what I mean? Lindsay and them. Because we were, you know, Ron, surgery. You guys took care of my boys when I was at the hospital every day. That's what I'm talking about. We, we help each other. We serve each other. We eat together, glad and sincere. My heart is so sincere. I'm grateful. We should be serving each other like that. We need to love each other. Because he says here, and the Lord, back to the Lord, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It's about people being saved. They need to see our love. Right? John 13, remember that. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must. It is a must. We must love each other. Why? What's the scripture say? So that every, yeah, so they would know that we are his disciples. If we love each other. So we got to be in each other's lives. So I hope this year you can say, just like Jesus had his three. Yeah. Who is your three in this church? In this family? Okay? In this kingdom? Who is your three? When we go into these new changes, Bible talks, that's where it starts, you guys. You build that family. That's why I love when I came to the church 21 years ago. I was part of a little family. And we spent time together. We built that. It wasn't just a Bible talk night. We spent time together all the time. We started right there. And you know what? It multiplies. Because people was like, ooh, what y'all doing? I want to be with y'all. Y'all just having a good old time. What y'all doing? I want to be with them. Right? So go into these Bible talks. If it didn't grow this year, your Baba talk, let's make it grow this year. Yeah. By being like the young Christians here, they loved each other. I can honestly say, 
I love everybody in this room. There's nothing I wouldn't do for every one of you in this room. I love drama too. That's okay. Bring it. <laughs> Call me anytime. I'm like, woohoo! I I'm sorry, y'all, but I love working for the Lord. I love helping his people because you know what? People did it for me. Yeah. I wouldn't be here if people didn't do it for me. Yeah. They set the example. They set the bar. Okay? No fear in total commitment. I pray this year as you're making your vows and thinking about this whole workshop that you will make a commitment to have a commitment to God above anything else. Let him shape you just like that powder. And let's do great things for God this year. Let's this church do great things because we have no fear. Because he says, I am with you. Right? Love you guys.